Well, hello there. Welcome back to the art room. I'm really glad you could make it today. Today I'm out on the art room scuba boat, and I'm hoping you'll come on a little adventure with me. We're going to see some great looking undersea fish. And when we get back, we'll make a paper mache version of our very own. So are you ready? Let's go. I knew I was going to have a great day when I met Frunel, the sea turtle. Frunel helped me on my quest to find the perfect fish for our paper mache project. He knew just where to guide me, and we saw gigantic whales, manta rays, and beautiful coral reefs. After a while, Frunel had to get back to his family, and I was on my own still searching for that perfect fish. Suddenly, there it was, an undiscovered reef, full of beautiful fish. I captured one gently, and even though I was a little sad that my adventure was over, I was still anxious to get back to the art room so we could start our fish project together. Okay, welcome back to the art room for our lesson about paper mache. Um, I just love making these great big fish um, out of a coat hanger. Obviously, we'll be showing you that in a second. And um, they just look so great at the art show. 25, 50 of them hanging all together. It's just really, really a neat thing. So you have your choice of using either a um, plastic hanger, of course, or a metal hanger. My favorite actually is the metal hanger because you can bend it so readily. It's just really great. But since most of you have the plastic hanger, we're probably going to go that way. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is grab a piece of cardboard and something to draw with here. And I'm going to see if I can um, uh, sketch out a tail. Okay. And... Yeah, nothing too elaborate. And I'm going to set that down on top and see if that's going to work out. All right. Looks good. Let's grab the scissors then and we'll do some cutting on that and get rid of the scraps there. Okay. Next, I'm going to lay that piece of um, cardboard underneath my coat hanger. And I'm going to begin to... Um, See if I can tape down that onto my frame. Okay. Lots of frame uh, taping there. And um, how about we get our newspaper and um, we're going to be wadding up some of that newspaper and forming a ball out of it. Um, after that, use your tape as good as you can to um, start to lash that body onto. Um, your framework that we're creating. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's make another little paper wad there and go on to the other side. Very good. And I think uh, this time I'm going to do my um, second fish a little different. I've got a little head that I'm going to squeeze in here that I made out of cardboard as well, or um, 
paper and I'm going to be taping that uh, together too to make a neat little head on our fish. Um, after that, here I am and I'm cutting out some of these cool little fin shapes. Okay, and see if you can get those fins taped on the side of your fish like that. Um, back in the art room I did my best to make sure every student got his own um, roll of masking tape. So we went through quite a bit of masking tape but it was really worth it. You really need to use a lot of masking tape. So I'm spreading out a sheet of paper as my kind of um, work area. Okay, and I got my um, my cats in the background. Here's my all-purpose flower. Okay, <laughs> that's Miss Lily back there. Hi, Miss Lily. And let's go ahead and pour the water in here. Uh, when you're making the paper mache paste, uh, it's best to go little by little. I've discovered, I've seen all kind of formulas and things, but I'm, I'm not going to bother with that like I usually do. And I'll get a little bit of flour, put it in, make sure the water's cold, start off with cold water, and kind of stir that in. Okay. And, okay, what you really want is for your flour to be kind of the consistency of a thick soup. Mine's not there, not near, uh, near there yet, so I'm going to keep adding up and stirring in some more flour. And I've got now, I think, about three little handfuls. You'll know when you get there. It's, it's kind of a nice creamy consistency, um, kind of like a thick, soupy material. And you can always add more if you don't like it later. So then, into my newspaper, and I'm going to tear up some strips. When I first start doing this, I like to keep the strips kind of long. And later on, you can change the nature and the shape of your paper strips if you want to. Uh, so the secret here is to get uh, an equal amount of uh, material on both parts of your um, paper strips. Make sure they're soaked through and start to apply them onto your fish. The first couple of ones that you do are going to be the most difficult because uh, there's really nothing to stick to right at the beginning but you'll catch on right away stick with it uh, it's a little awkward at the beginning but once the paper begins to cover more of the fish the paper wants to stick to itself um, and it really gets quite nice to um, start working so here i am working at super speed here and i'm uh, making sure that the paper kind of has a dark look about it. When it turns dark, you know you're doing it right. So, um, just a little side note, I used to get, uh, out of a group of maybe 50 students or so, I'd get one person or maybe a couple that just didn't like the touch <laughs> of the, of the paper mache paste. And I said, hey kids, don't worry about it. Um, here's a pair of rubber gloves if you, if you want rubber gloves, or you can try using a paintbrush. Uh, but then, you know, little, um, uh, little aside from that, usually they ended up not doing very well with gl gloves or a paintbrush, and they ended up just gutting it out and getting it on their hands and kind of maybe enjoying it at the end, I'd like to think. But um, having said that, it's, it's entirely non-toxic, and um, it's just flour, so won't hurt you. And um, once you get into the spirit of it, it's just so fun. These paper mache uh, sculptures just are so fun to do. Uh, we made really, really big ones later on once the kids got um, got good at making smaller things like this. This is kind of an introductory uh, lesson that we did. We made huge, huge sculptures later on when uh, they were um, approaching sixth grade. We could do some big ones. So anyway, here I am, and I'm just about finishing up uh, my first coating of newspaper and trying to kind of massage it into place, kind of squeeze it and pinch it and pull it, and um, getting everything tucked together. You might notice I put a little paper wad underneath the fin from behind to um, try to make that stand out. The fin was always kind of the problem. Um, so uh, I'm letting that dry now, and this time I'm getting some white paper, and 
we're going to tear up our white uh, copy machine paper or duplicator paper, whatever you want to call it, and make some smaller pieces. Why use this? Well, um, your fish is going to be so much easier to paint and stronger if you uh, do the last coat in this nice white uh, copying machine paper. Uh, you'll thank me because it'll just be so nice and paintable. Um, newspaper is really hard to paint over with water paints, uh, especially if you're using a real kind of a, thin, a thinner paint. Um, and this just makes a wonderful painting surface. And it really does make it a lot stronger um, as you're going along. So um, keep on um, putting that white paper on top, okay, and uh, the more you put on, the stronger it's going to get, and behind that fin as well, um, and it just really gets so fun to work with because uh, the paper begins to get kind of a clay-like consistency when it soaks um, all of the paper mache material into it. Um, really, really pretty neat, and I'm just about done here forming mine. So um, in a second, I'm going to do this eyeball thing. And what I did was I took a piece of paper and I rolled it up and I made a kind of a nice little dough ball out of it. You see that? And I'm sticking it on to the side for an eye. And I could have used that for other de details, of course, too. Uh, but after I put the eye on, then I'm going to go back in there and do this smooth uh, overlay of the eye so that it uh, sticks on a little bit better and it's a little bit easier to paint. So uh, of course I'm going to flip over and repeat the process on the other side. Okay. Very good. Okay. So now I uh, want to be able to hang this up to dry so I'm going to grab a pencil and I'm going to shove um, a hole through uh, what I think is going to be the top of my fish and with a piece of string then um, run that through just kind of push it through right there like that and uh, if you can't do a double knot ask your teacher or your somebody to uh, run a little knot around your fingertip and there we have it so we're ready to hang our sculpture up and um, oh wait a minute I think what I'll do then is I'll make a little hider strip here for my, uh, yeah, that's it. I'll hide that little um, place that I poked a hole with there. One last little finishing touch. Very good. All right. So at this point, then, I am good to go. Um, and it's going to take at least two days for this to dry. So I'll see you back here in about two days. Okay, it's a couple of days later and the fish is dried up terrific. He's ready to paint. And if you're um, an art teacher or maybe just a mom that's doing this with um, somebody, one of your kids at home, here's a little cautionary tale for you. Um, as an art teacher, this was the toughest part. You wouldn't think it would be after working through this whole thing and building this paper mache fish, uh, the hardest part for the kids was deciding what color to paint. And so for that reason, I try to give them a little guide and show them some uh, examples um, of like what their fish might want to look like. Um, and part of that was um, I gave them a sheet of paper the day before we started to paint and after we had looked at a lot of different fish on our whiteboard and things like that, um, we um, kind of talked through the process of maybe picking uh, one or two colors to start with. Uh, and it really was helpful. Uh, the first year I did this, back when I was kind of a rookie, um, <laughs> I set out every paint color I had. And uh, it was tough on the kids because they were just so... Um, into putting as many colors as they possibly could and um, so we wound up with a lot of brown fish and a lot of dark black fish that were kind of muddy so uh, not to belabor the point but put some thought into um, your fish before you let uh, your kids do it or before you do it yourself really think this through 
Okay, so going back to our original fish that we caught in the show, <laughs> there he is. I had a great time uh, uh, picking out colors for this one, and I've been kind of inspired by that uh, that little color change thing that I just showed you. So uh, I'm going to change things up this time, and um, you can watch me paint mine here. Um, so I'm going to get our little fish back here, and I've got my paint colors. I really like that blue, so I'm going to squirt some blue out here. And Oh yeah, that's so pretty. So these are um, acrylic paint colors, but if you have tempera paint, that would be okay too. Um, or just about any color paint, any kind of paint rather. Uh, that's uh, the beauty of having him all white now because we laid that white uh, paint down or white paper down first. That's, that's great. He's going to be easy to paint. So just going to go into some kind of super speed here, I think, in a second. And uh, let's paint a fish. Oh, this is going to be fun. Okay, I snuck out for a quick water change there. Uh, another little tip, uh, when you're painting dark colors like blue and you want to switch over um, and get a pure yellow or maybe a red perhaps, it's always a good idea to wash your brush out really good and so you'll have a nice pure uh, yellow um, when you begin um, for the next color. So here we go. Okay, that's going to just about do it for our fish project. And thanks so much, as always, for watching. Remember what we always say, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you've got something to be proud of. You're an artist. So stick with it, and we'll see you back here next time in Mr. Shea's Art Room.